Today we are going to study abstract factory pattern. Let's consider this car making problem. So assuming that you have multiple algorithms for making a car. For example, suppose you have a simple car making algorithm in which you have, uh, the first step is to get a body, second step to get an engine, third step to get four wheels, and then the fourth step you connect them together and return a simple car. And you also have an enhanced car making algorithm which works in a way that you get a body, you get an engine, you get four wheels, and uh, here you add ABS, and then you can add them together and return an enhanced car. Now your algorithm can work with, uh, you want your algorithm work with multiple data types. For example, with Toyota data, including Toyota body, Toyota engine, Toyota wheels, and uh, Toyota ABS. So with Toyota data, your simple car making algorithm will output a Toyota car, say Camry. And with Toyota data, your in-house car making algorithm will output a, a car, say Lexus. And also you have Ford data. So you have Ford body, Ford engine, Ford wheels, and Ford ABS. So with Ford data, your simple car making algorithm will output a car, say Ford Taurus. And with Ford data, so your in-house car making algorithm will output a in-house car, say Ford 500. So how to solve this problem? How to design such a system? So, well, the straightforward solution is that you program each algorithm twice. So, for example, for the simple car making algorithm, you write it once for the Toyota burn, because your algorithm works, in this implementation, your algorithm works with Toyota data. And you write the, the same algorithm again, but uh, in your implementation, then you will work with Ford data. And similarly for the enhanced car making algorithm, you write it once for the to using Toyota data, and you write it again for Ford data. So imagine in such uh, you in your implementations, for example, in your two versions of the simple car making algorithm, most of the code are exactly the same, except that you just replace the Toyota data with Ford data. And similarly, similarly for the enhanced car making algorithm in the two versions, the only difference is uh, is the data types are different other than the data, so the algorithms are the same. Which means that you are going to copy paste blocks of code from one implementation to another implementation. And remember that copy pasting blocks often indicate a bad design, which means you are not reusing uh, existing code. So that's not a good idea. So how to solve this problem? The way to solve this is abstract factory pattern. So imagine that you have m types of data and uh, n types n algorithms, and each algorithm can operate on each type of data. So naive the naive solution is to implement each algorithm m times. So and one implementation for each data type. This will lead to, lead to m times n implementations. So using the abstract factory pattern will allow us to reduce this implementation complexity from m times n to m plus n. Basically, you write one algorithm in each one class. So you implement each algorithm only once in a class. Remember, in the past, you you probably have seen that the data, uh, the, the class, each class, you typically use to store some data and uh, and uh, add some uh, functions to operate on the data. So, kind of each data is uh, uh, they, each class is data oriented. But here you can see that we are going to dedicate a class for an algorithm only. So again, so you will have designed one class for each algorithm. And then this algorithm will not work with a concrete data type. This algorithm will work, when you write this algorithm, this algorithm will work with the abstract data. So you need to have an abstract class that defines the interfaces that this algorithm need to operate on each type of data. Then which means that in your algorithm, you work with a pointer or reference to this uh, abstract class. 
and then you have one class for each concrete data type and this class will inherit from the abstract class and implement the interface is defined in the abstract class and in the client basically in your main program you basically hook a specific algorithm and a specific type of data dynamically at runtime let's take a look of this car making problem so you have a abstract class for representing the data basically represents uh, you have abstract class basically defining the interfaces that uh, the algorithm need to operate on each type of data so again for this abstract class you basically define the interfaces that each concrete data type need to provide for example in this case uh, because the algorithm your car maker algorithm will need to work with data and the data need to provide uh, these interfaces basically we uh, can give me a body give me engine and give me wheels and uh, give me abs so this basically defines the interfaces that the data type need to uh, provide and then in, this is the concrete uh, data class so basically you have one class for each concrete data type this one inherits from publicly inherits from the abstract uh, data type in this case this Toyota auto parts factory publicly inherits from this abstract auto parts factory and uh, in this Toyota auto parts factory in this concrete data type class you need to implement all these interfaces you need to implement all these interfaces this is abstract class you can see these are pure virtual functions these are pure virtual functions because it it is purely used for the purpose of defining interfaces so you do you don't need to have an, an, an implementation for them and in the concrete data type data class you need to provide uh, an implementation for each such interface so this is Toyota data concrete Toyota data type implement publicly inherited from this interface and implement this interface and similarly this is the forward uh, data class inherited from publicly inherited from this uh, abstract uh, data class interface and then implement each interface and then for the each algorithm for each algorithm we it, it uh, we have one class for each algorithm we have one class for each algorithm and this algorithm works with abstract data type reference or pointer reference or pointer so in this case this is a uh, works with a reference and uh, you in your algorithm you basically call this uh, po pointer or reference to all operate on the uh, data for example in this case in this uh, concrete simple car uh, making algorithm you basically uh, add a body right? you need the um, you need a body and you need engine and you need wheels and so basically you call the this factory reference uh, this is abstract uh, abstract data in, uh, reference to give you the data that you need and then you put them together uh, and uh, return this is a return a simple car and similarly here this is a, a concrete in-house car assembler this is a, another algorithm and this algorithm will work with the uh, abstract data uh, class uh, reference or pointer here is a reference and then you basically operate on the data through this um, pointer or reference and in the client side there are two steps the first step is you need to instantiate the algorithm objects and also data objects here you need to inst here for example you instantiate uh, a concrete simple car algorithm object and a concrete enhanced car algorithm object and uh, you instantiate a concrete uh, or Toyota uh, data object and the four data object and then second step is you hook each algorithm you hook an algorithm and a data object together 
For example, in this case, I hook up uh, a simple car algorithm, simple car making algorithm, and uh, with a Toyota factory, with a concrete Toyota uh, data object, and then I will get a Camry. For example, this simple car, uh, simple car algorithm, and hook with four data, then I will get, get a Taurus. And this is a enhanced car algorithm with the Toyota data, and then I get a Lexus. And this enhanced car algorithm with the four data, I will get a Ford. 500, for example. So this is the UML for abstract factory pattern. So this part is uh, the data, and and uh, this is the in abstract factory. Here is the interface for handling the data. This is the interface for handling the data, and uh, this is a concrete data type implement these interfaces, and this is another one. And this part is the other algorithms. So this represents one operation, say sorting, and then you may have two algorithms for this operation. For example, you may have a bubble sort algorithm, and you may have a quick sort algorithm, both are for sorting. And you may have another operation, say printing, and uh, you may have printing algorithm one, printing algorithm two, and so on. And this client in the client the client basically hook up an algorithm, one of these algorithm with one of uh, an object of a concrete uh, data class. Then this algorithm will be able to, because the algorithm can work with this abstract interface and uh, this uh, abs concrete data class do inherit from this uh, abstract data type and also implement these interfaces. So uh, each of these algorithm can work with uh, an object of these concrete uh, data classes. Now let's take a look at the advantages of uh, abstract factory pattern. Essentially, essentially so um, we need to, we look at from two aspects. One is how does this design pattern avoid making changes to existing classes? Another is how does this design pattern achieve software reuse? Well, from the perspective of, of avoiding making changes to existing classes, one is for this design pattern is we can add or change an algorithm without changing existing data classes. And also we can change or add a data class without changing or existing, uh, changing the existing algorithm classes. We can separate the concerns of the algorithms and uh, data. We separate the concerns of algorithms and data. Remember the software design principle of for uh, separation of concerns. For software reuse, you can see that we can reuse the same algorithm class for different data types. In this course, we are going to learn several design patterns, and these design patterns reflect software engineering principles. For example, in this uh, abstract factory pattern. It reflects the principles of separation of concerns, abstraction, anticipation of change, and generality. For separation of concerns, this abstract factory pattern separates data and algorithms. When you design data classes, you just focus on uh, the data classes themselves. And for when you design algorithms, you just focus on the algorithm itself, and uh, you don't need to consider the details of the algorithms. So here note that we use to dedicate a class for data. Basically we use a class to represent an entity and uh, operations, uh, operations associated with the entity. For example, an employee class may have data such as uh, first name, last name, and so on. And uh, it also has the operations, say printing. And here you note you in the abstract factory pattern that you know that we dedicate a class purely for an algorithm right for the algorithm class and for abstraction so here the in the abstract factory pattern the abstract data interface class is an abstra abstraction of many concrete data classes basically we abstract a set of interfaces that a data class need to provide 
so that the data class can work with the algorithm. And then we put all these interfaces into an abstract class. For anticipation of change, you can see that uh, when we have M data types and uh, N algorithms, using abstract factor pattern, we only need to program M data classes and N algorithm classes instead of M times N uh, implementations. And then in the future, when you need to add a new data type or you need to modify some data types, you don't need to change the algorithms. You do not need to change the code that you have already designed for the N algorithms. And similarly, in the future, when you need to add another new algorithm, or you uh, modify some of the, the algorithms, you do not need to make any modification to the M uh, data classes that you have already developed. Always we want to avoid making changes to existing uh, code, existing classes. And for generality, in this abstract factory pattern, we generalize the algorithm to be universally applicable to uh, any data, any data class that uh, as long as they provide the interfaces that this algorithm uh, need to uh, work with. And this abstract data interface defines uh, what interfaces that uh, the algorithm need to work with. And also we generate data to work with any algorithm that requires the same set of uh, interfaces.